I'm Mark Sudol. Welcome back to Power and Politics. Sujata Gadkar Wilcox joins us now. She is a Democratic candidate for the 22nd District State Senate seat. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me, Mark. Yes, some kind of big news here as we uh, start this interview. Uh, prominent uh, Bridgeport community leader Shante Hanks uh, yes. just endorsed you this week uh, after she dropped out of this race. What are some of the, the values you both share? Oh, yes, thank you for I, I'm so honored to be um, at, you know endorsed by Dr. Shante Hanks. She's one of the most impressive, well-respected um, figures in, in Bridgeport, in Connecticut, that, that, I've, that I've met. And, you know, we share a lot, actually. So we're both women, of course. Um, we're both, we've both committed our, our careers to public interest and public service. We're both commissioners. Um, she's working on housing. I work, I'm on the Commission for Human Rights and Opportunities. Um, and so we have that shared commitment, and I think our, our careers sort of are indicative of that, that we have a shared commitment, for me, particularly public interest law, education, human rights, and for her, Human right, uh, housing, and and education. You know, so I we have so many, and we also get along really well. You know, we have so much in common, and for me, that's what that's what this seat too actually represents. Uh, our our getting together is the kind of bridge that I think this seat needs. You know, it's about collaboration. It's about working together for the community interest, for the public, for the people. Um, and I'm so honored that she chose to endorse me, um, not just because we're women, and I think it is important to have a woman's perspective and a woman's voice, especially um, to replace uh, you know, Senator Marilyn Moore, who used that voice very powerfully, um, but because we're both educators, you know, because we're both committed to public service, we're both committed to public interest, and we're collaborators. You know, we work across different sectors together, and so I'm just very honored and, uh, you know, to have her endorsement. So yes, now of course we're down to uh, four candidates. You are the only woman still standing here yes. now. Uh, the primary is coming up uh, this summer. Do you, you see this as a close race? You know, yes. I, I mean, I think every primary is is, is is close, especially this one. It's such a big field. You know, um, the, the, thing, the nice thing for me is I've I've been involved, I've been engaged, I've I've built a community in Trumbull, particularly um, the, a community based on grassroots politics. Um, but you know. What, what I think uniquely I bring to this is I've also worked in all three, well, one as an educator, you know, that's, that's, that needs to be a priority in Bridgeport, in Trumbull, in Monroe. Um, and I'm also a collaborator. You know, I've worked, I work already in all three communities. So I'm on the board of the Lakewood Trumbull Y, which works in, you know, which is oversees Trumbull and Monroe. I'm part of the Greater Bridgeport League of Women Voters. I'm part of the Rotary. We do things to me. This community, this district, has already felt like one community. You know, we need to f we, that. We need that more. You know, we, we can't pit our districts, our communities, against each other. Actually, when Bridgeport succeeds, Trumbull succeeds, and when Trumbull succeeds, Monroe succeeds. So we're, in fact, to me, this has always felt like one unit, um, especially for me. I mean, I grew up in Queens, you know, so I've been living in Trumbull for 20 years. So Trumbull is my community. But when we first moved to Connecticut. Where did we spend our time, Bridgeport? Because I grew up in Queens, you know. And my father grew up poor. He came. He came here from India. You know. He built. He built a career as an engineer because he had access to a good education. So I've committed my, you know, my public uh, professional career to public interest law and to education because, and, and mostly educational access. So what I do is I try to provide students with access to opportunities that then allow them to reinvest in their own communities. So now you're a successful professor at Quinnipiac. Why do you want to run? You know, because I committed to grassroots democracy. And, and uh, we look at our political scene right now, you know, statewide, nationally, um, and the system is broken. You know, we, we need people who have new leadership, new vision, who are collaborators, who are willing to bring communities together. And I've always been that person in, in all aspects of my career. You know, I've, I've been a bridge that, that brings people together. I collaborate. I've worked in different sectors. So I've worked as a litigator. I've worked as a non, the director of a nonprofit for juvenile law. So, uh, you know, teaching students about legal rights and responsibilities under the law, and now teaching college students, so in education. So my background cuts across sectors. And what I try to do 
even with my students is to have them work within their own local community organizations. We don't, I don't just teach principles on, on, in the classroom. Those principles have to be applied, so those students have to understand. When you say the human right not to be hungry, what does that mean? What does it mean to work with a community organization that's providing food for people who don't have enough food? And that's the kind of work that I do, even as a, as a faculty member, because I've always been committed you know, to, to helping communities and to public interest. My whole career has been committed to equity work and to public interest law. So what are some of the issues facing people in Bridgeport, Trumbull, and Monroe? Yes, and I and this is where you know we have three very vibrant and in some ways very different communities, but some of those interests in fact align. Education, I would say, is number one. All three communities have not gotten enough in terms of state funding, and especially now when the a federal pandemic relief funding is no longer going to be available, we really need to focus on investing in education. Quality of life is an issue, right? Roads are always something <laughs> that everybody wants to talk about and more investment. So it's really about a, a, an investment in this, from the state in these communities and an advocate that's going to push for that and push for a vision you know, of good government, of ethics. I'm also an ethics fellow. I was on the ethics Commission in Trumbull, you know, to, to think about how all of these things come together. That's what democracy means to me. It's about grassroots politics. I just went to, to a door, and when it was right in the middle of, of the conversation yes, uh, yesterday, the pouring rain, and, and you know, the, the, the person at the door, Lynn, gave me her umbrella. Um, that was wonderful. That, that is the kind of community politics. You know, take my umbrella, bring it back whenever you can. People know me because I'm in the community, I'm engaged in the community, and I care about this. Mm -hmm. um, Marilyn Moore leaves a seat real quick. How would she like to be remembered? you got about 10 seconds. Oh, I think she was committed very much to education and housing, and I'd like to continue that and then build and collaborate from there. All right, so Jana Gadkar Wilcox, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so much for having me. Well, big names come out in support of President Biden as he visits Connecticut to raise money for his reelection campaign.